Is there a war brewing in Middle East? Are Iran and Israel at risk of igniting another conflict that could destabilize the entire region? Twelve American warships are already deployed in the Middle East sphere. Israel's internal security service has asked Netanyahu to avoid traveling for the coming few days. All holidays and sanctioned leave have been cancelled of IDF servicemen and reservists. Israeli PM Netanyahu is meeting with Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid to discuss the developments in the past 42 hours. International airlines are suspending their flights to Israel until August 8. Why is all this happening? It's because a pair of assassinations of anti-Israel militant leaders hours apart is threatening to set off a regional clash and upend already fragile talks aimed at ending the war in Gaza. The deadly round of strikes, retaliation and negotiations escalated Wednesday when Hamas political chief Ismail Haniyeh was killed hours after he attended the inauguration of Iran's new president in Tehran. Israel has not claimed responsibility, but Iran claims the United States had a role and threatened revenge against Israel. It was the second assassination in less than 24 hours to be blamed on Israel. On Tuesday, the Israeli military said it had killed Hezbollah commander Fouad Shukir in an airstrike in a Beirut suburb. The killing followed the rocket attack Saturday on the town of Maidal Shams that killed 12 young people in the Israeli-controlled Golan Heights. Iran-backed Hezbollah denied it was behind the Maidal Shams attack, with governments and diplomats around the world trying to prevent Mideast tensions from boiling over. The United Nations Security Council held an emergency meeting late Wednesday but issued no collective message afterward. Here's what to know about the intensifying conflict. Iran's supreme leader and representatives of Palestinian militias that he backs prayed Thursday over the coffins of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh and his bodyguard, who were killed in the shocking assassination. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei prayed over Haniyeh's coffin at Tehran University while Iran's new president Masoud Pazeshkian stood next to him. State television later showed the coffins placed in a truck and moved on the street toward Azadi Square in Tehran, with people throwing flowers at them. Haniyeh's remains were to be transferred to Qatar for burial Friday. Iran supports Hamas, as well as Hezbollah and other Palestinian militant groups fighting Israel in Gaza. Now Iran has blamed America saying they supported this attack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, all parties in the Middle East must avoid escalatory actions that could plunge the region into further conflict. Blinken appealed for countries to make the right choices in the days ahead and said a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza was the only way to begin to break the current cycle of violence and suffering. Blinken did not mention Israel, Iran or Hamas by name in his comments. Israel is under fire on multiple fronts. Israel uses targeted killings and the perception of overwhelming force in Gaza to communicate with the region's other players, Iran among them about the consequences of aggression against Israel. Now, Israel faces the threat of retaliation from multiple fronts. Against that backdrop, Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon have exchanged near-daily strikes. But previously, they kept the conflict at a deadly but relatively low level that has not escalated to full-scale war. The assassinations of Shukir and Haniyeh could change those calculations. Iran has also threatened to respond after the attack on its territory. Israeli foreign minister said in a letter to dozens of foreign ministries around the world that, Israel is not interested in an all-out war. He urged a full cessation of hostilities along the Israel-Lebanon border, but he added a warning. We will harm with great force whoever harms us. But is there a threat of regional war? The complex dynamics add up to serious concerns about a regional war and which countries could get drawn in. We've now seen again that Israel can target anywhere, even inside Iran. This time there is a question of the safety of the Iranian senior officials. Israel is basically sending a message to the Iranians, we can kill any one of you anywhere, anytime, and that is very dangerous. Haniyeh's killing in Tehran puts the Iranian regime in an embarrassing position. The strike by a foreign country openly violated Iran's sovereignty at the time when the regime was preparing to celebrate the app. Ointment of a new president. The Hamas chief was among international dignitaries invited to the inauguration. The attack demonstrates two things, Iran's vulnerability and Israel's ability to carry out an attack based on precise intelligence and superior technology. Either way, it exposes the Iranian regime's weaknesses. The last time Iran claimed its sovereignty was violated by Israel. During the April 1, 2024, attack on its embassy in Damascus, it responded by launching hundreds of missiles and attack drones against Israel. Iran could use its proxies, including Hezbollah, this time around, or it could respond directly, using its own military from its own territory, as it did in April. On July 31, it was reported that Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, had ordered a direct strike. 